Um, welcome to the National Indian Gaming Commission's report on the fiscal year for two, 2022 gross gaming revenue. I'm Sequoia Simmermeyer, a member of the Kohari tribe from North Carolina, and I'm proud to serve as the chairman of the National Indian Gaming Commission headquartered in Washington, DC. As Justin said, I'm joined for this announcement by my colleague on the commission, uh, Vice Chair Jeannie Hovland, and the NIGC's Deputy Chief of Staff, Officer Josh Benefield. I especially want to thank the Chickasaw Nation for the remarks, Deputy Secretary, uh, and for your hospitality. Uh, thank you for hosting this week the NIGC's advanced audit training uh, and providing really such a beautiful world-class facility and giving us the time to make such an announcement on your land. Before sharing the gross gaming revenue report details, I'd like to say that in general, Indian gaming continues to do well. Despite the historic challenge of tribal casino closures that began in March 2020 due to the pandemic. This year's historic revenue reflects the resilience of many tribal uh, gaming operations and how tribal gaming continues to rebound and remain strong. Tribal governments and the operations they license continue to explore new and innovative ways to expand and deliver world-class experiences in order to cultivate sustainable economies. My travels, I've seen how tribes across many regions have taken a comprehensive approach to improving business operations for example, by incorporating evolving technology like mobile gaming to enhance both player experience as well as the bottom line. Across the Indian gaming industry, tribes pursue economic sustainability through gaming by relying on the robust regulatory reputation for which Indian gaming is well known and made better when supported by efficient and effective measures in our regulations. Now the information you've been waiting for, the fiscal year 2022 gross gaming revenue report. Gaming revenue for fiscal year 2022 is the highest in Indian gaming history, growing to $40.9 billion. Seven of the NIGC's eight regions showed an increase over fiscal year 2021. The overall fiscal year 22 gross gaming revenue increase was $1.9 billion, about 5% higher than the historic fiscal year 21 gross gaming revenue of $39 billion. As operations emerged from this pandemic, it is important to note that the year-over-year -year GGR change by region should not be used as a direct indicator of the local economy in any specific region. Many other factors could have an impact on the GGR at the regional level, such as new gaming operations, expansions or renovations to existing operations, temporary or permanent closures, or changes in a gaming operation's own fiscal year. The Phoenix region experienced the largest increase at 15.7%. If you're interested in learning more about regional performance and other comparisons to fiscal year 21, you can download the fiscal year 22 gross gaming revenue report from the NIGC website at www.nigc.gov. For those who may not be familiar, the gross gaming revenue figure is an aggregate of revenue from 519 independently audited financial statements of the 244 tribes that license gaming operations on Indian land in 29 states. In operations revenue is based on the amount wagered minus winnings returned to players and does not reflect earnings before salaries, tribal state compact payments and operating expenses. As I reported earlier, fiscal year 22's revenue of $40.9 billion is the largest gross gaming revenue reported in the history of Indian gaming, and a, single, a signal that the industry has rebounded in many ways and is growing overall. 